Coming up on today's Airborne, a transatlantic balloon attempt lands shore. Google's founders might need an internet search for jet fuel. And Cessna announces one of the largest orders ever for 172s. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. As we are wrapping up today's episode of Airborne, our newsroom got a late breaking story. Jim Campbell is here to report. Thanks, Ashley, and hi, folks. It's some good news for our friends from the north. The C Series is now a real live flying airplane. With perfect weather, Bombardier's first shot at an all new family of aircraft designed for the 100 to 149 seat market segment took off this morning from Montreal Mirabel International Airport at approximately 9.55 EDT. The two and a half hour flight apparently went off well and also provided for the first flight test of Pratt & Whitney's new geared turbofan pure power engine system. The flight of C-Series Flight Test Vehicle 1, FTV-1, a CS-100 jetliner, was conducted under the command of Captain Chuck Ellis, Chief Flight Test Pilot Bombardier Flight Test Center, and Captain Ellis was assisted by Captain Andy Litavnix and Andreas Hartono in the roles of first officer and flight test engineer. According to Captain Ellis, quote, the performance of the C-Series aircraft was very impressive. We couldn't have wished for a better maiden flight. As of Monday, Bombardier has booked orders and commitments for 388 C-Series aircraft, which include firm orders for 177 C-Series airliners, comprising some 15 customers and lessees. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. Jonathan Trapp's dream of floating across the Atlantic Ocean beneath a cluster of helium balloons ended in a safe landing, but on the wrong side of the ocean. Trapp landed his cluster of balloons in a remote area of Newfoundland at approximately 1830 Eastern Time, Thursday, September 12th, 2013. He had launched at about 800 Eastern Time from Caribou, Maine, and had been airborne for only about 12 hours on a flight that was expected to take three to six days. One of Trapp's flight controllers, Kevin Knapp, tells ANN the Trapp was never able to achieve a stable float altitude, and the aircraft developed a severe yo-yo effect. Rapid descents with the aircraft even hitting the surface of the water, followed by rapid ascents to altitudes as high as 21,000 feet or more. The constant altitude fluctuations were a serious concern for ATC, trying to provide air traffic separation and force trap to expend excessive amounts of ballast. After only 12 hours of flight, it was decided the trap no longer had sufficient ballast available to complete the journey. So the decision was made to land on Newfoundland rather than to continue on and face a ditching at sea. Trapp told the UK newspaper, The Daily Express, quote, There was no way I was going to make it across, and it was better to go down on land than in the middle of nowhere. I was going through my ballast too fast. I either had to land here or in the middle of the ocean, end quote. Trapp had already made history as a cluster balloon pilot, having been the first to cross Lake Michigan, the English Channel, and the Alps, before making this attempt at the Atlantic. The Atlantic has been crossed successfully by balloon 18 times, but never by a cluster balloon. Google founders Larry Page and Sergey Brin will find the cost of flying their fleet of corporate jets and helicopters to be more expensive. After a deal that had allowed them to buy deeply discounted fuel from the Pentagon through NASA expired August 31st. The deal was part of a lease agreement made in 2007 that allowed the internet entrepreneur's airplane management company, H211, to base its company fleet of seven jets at Moffett Federal Airfield. Pentagon records show that the fuel purchased, about 2.3 million gallons since 2009, was billed at about 319 per gallon. The going average since 2009 has been 435 per gallon, according to Fred Fitz, president of the Corporate Aircraft Association. The discounted fuel was only supposed to be available when Google Jets were flying scientific missions for NASA. Since being cut off at Moffett, H211 has been buying fuel at other locations and landing their planes at the former Navy base with partially full tanks. A NASA spokeswoman said the agency is working with H211 to resume fuel sales, 
but at a fair market price. Cessna has announced an order for 79 Cessna 172 Skyhawk aircraft, one of the largest orders on record for the aircraft, at Moscow's Jet Expo 2013. Moscow-based Vira ZH plans to use the Skyhawks for training purposes at various flight schools throughout Western Russia. The order is part of a multi-year agreement between Cessna and Vira ZH, with all 79 aircraft set to be delivered by the third quarter of 2014. On completion of the final delivery, Vira ZH will have one of the world's largest fleets of Skyhawk 172 aircraft in operation. The 172 Skyhawk has become the best-selling, most-flown single-engine aircraft in the world. And the battle for sales of jetliners, Airbus has once again pulled ahead of Boeing. Tom Patton has details. After outselling Airbus by 370 units through August in 2012, Boeing has sold 116 fewer airliners than its European rival through the same eight months in 2013. Over the past 10 years, Airbus has consistently sold more jetliners than has Boeing, but the gap has been very narrow, according to analysis from NASDAQ. In 2012, the dynamic changed due to strong sales of Boeing's newly announced 737 MAX. However, Airbus currently holds an advantage in single-aisle sales with its A320neo family. As airplanes get bigger, Boeing has the advantage. Through August, Boeing has sold 124 wide-body airplanes compared to 112 orders for Airbus. NASDAQ reports that Boeing's production numbers are higher as well, delivering 414 aircraft through August compared to Airbus's 394. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. B-Light Aircraft says the company is preparing a brand new RTF B-Light Ultralight Aircraft. Built with a steel chromoly 4130 steel fuselage for delivery in Q4 of 2013. The fuselage is power coated and fully uncovered. You may choose to cover it with fabric at any time, or you can pay B-Light to cover it and paint it. The wings are constructed from doubled aluminum ribs and aluminum spars. The wings are covered with taut Dacron and Oracle in a color of your choosing, as are the tail feathers. A simple panel is included with basic B-Light instruments. The wheels are a beefy 5.00 by 5S, and the engine is a 28 horsepower F33 from Hearth, with electric start and ground recharge battery. The list price is $25,495, and B-Light is offering an immediate discount of $5,500. Shipping cost is extra, and a $5,000 refundable deposit is required. The buyer must take delivery before December 31st of 2013. Other terms and conditions will apply, including the standard seller contract. You're watching Airborne. More in a moment. Since its inception, Redbird Flight Simulations has been dedicated to developing new training technologies and processes in an ongoing effort to make aviation safer, more affordable, and more accessible. Consider Redbird's flagship flight training device, the FMX, a superior quality, full motion, feature-rich advanced aviation training device priced with real-world flight training organizations in mind. With standard features that are anything but standard, such as wraparound visuals, a fully enclosed cockpit, quick change configurations, scenario-based training compatibility, and of course, an electric motion platform, the FMX serves up a level of realism that is simply unavailable in other training devices on the market. For more information on Redbird Flight Simulations, the Redbird FMX, and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop us an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. A settlement totaling nearly $4 million has been reached in a lawsuit stemming from an accident in Owls Head, Maine, last November, in which an airplane departing Knox County Regional Airport struck a privately owned pickup truck crossing a runway. The truck was authorized to operate on the airport grounds and had issued the proper warnings to local traffic before crossing the runway at the uncontrolled field. 
The accident fatally injured two University of Maine students and an alumnus that were all members of the same fraternity. The Don F. Pratt Museum at Fort Campbell has a newly restored exhibit, an AH-1F Cobra helicopter. As a museum piece now, this bird has a proud service record. Specialist Zachary Weisner, an OH-58D armament technician with Company B-96 ASB, who worked on the Cobra, also researched its history. This Cobra was built in 1968 to serve on the front lines in Vietnam. After Vietnam, it was in service with E Troop 1st Squadron 7th Cavalry Regiment at Fort Hood through the late 80s and early 90s. In 1997, the bird moved on to the Texas National Guard's 1st Battalion, 121st Aviation Regiment based in Austin. It was retired in 2001 when the Army moved from the Cobra platform to the Apache. Restoring the aircraft took the effort of many and some 120 hours of labor. We've heard this one too many times before. A TSA agent in trouble with the law. This time arrested in connection with making threats against Los Angeles International Airport. The LA Times reports that according to FBI spokeswoman Laura Eimler, 29-year-old Na Alpha Anawa has worked as a screener at KLAX since 2006, but was suspended from that position on Tuesday. Anawa resigned then later the same day. A man believed to be Anawa called TSA and said they should evacuate certain terminals at the airport. This according to Imler. It was following that threat that he was arrested. The investigation led authorities to a website that appears to have connections to Ottawa, on which several rambling letters included references to 9-11 and the end of the world. One also contained statements against the U.S. government and the threat of terrorist activity on the 12th anniversary of the 2001 attacks. In partnership with Redbird Flight Simulations, the Society of Aviation and Flight Educators will present its first regional pilot proficiency project at Skyport in San Marcos, Texas on October the 26th through the 27th. The project brings valuable proficiency training to pilots by combining relevant safety forums, challenging simulator training sessions, food and camaraderie. Forums at Skyport will be presented by some of the country's top aviation educators, including master instructors, national CFIs of the year, and noted subject matter experts. The fee-based project offers benefits to participating pilots, such as wings credit and accident forgiveness to qualifying pilots. Pilots flying to Skyport can purchase 100 low lead for $1 per gallon as well. And those who register online before October 20th receive 10% off the full registration fee. Conceived by SAFE in 2010, the pilot proficiency makes forums and simulator training sessions available at aviation venues across the U.S. And now it's time for our Aero Video of the Week. Today's Aero Video of the Week is all about new technology and short hops. It's a brief 48 second video, but it shows the first vertical night landing on a carrier by an F-35B, an important milestone for this new aircraft. Find it on YouTube by searching F-35B accomplishes first night vertical landing aboard USS Wasp. And speaking of short hops, when does a spacecraft say ribbit? When it launches a frog on its way to the moon. A still camera on a sound trigger captured an airborne frog just as NASA's Laddie spacecraft lifted off from Pad 0B at Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia. The photo team confirms the frog is real and was captured in a single frame by one of the remote cameras used to photograph the launch. The flight of the hapless frog appears to have been triggered by the blast from the engines that were boosting the Laddie lunar atmospheric probe to the moon. It was clearly a case of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. So what happened to the frog? 
It's destined to be one of aviation's greatest mysteries. Well, that's our program. Remember, you can get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories at aero-news.net. Please remember, Airborne is streamed twice weekly and is always online. Join us again every Tuesday and Friday for a new edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.